Right, in this example, we've got a single story, single bay portal frame that is 10 foot wide, 10 foot high, has a lateral load of 10 kips, has a gravity load of 3 kips per foot. We've got the beam stiffness at 800 inches to the fourth, of course, divided by L, and then we got A. The columns are identical at 600 inches to the fourth, and we have moment resisting frame, all steel. And we want to go figure out what the reactions are, draw shear moment diagrams, all that good stuff. Right? So we're going to apply the slope deflection approach to this. Other videos consider how to do an approximate analysis. Uh, we could obviously also do flexibility method, a lot of different approaches. This video is about the slope deflection method. Right? So let's take a look here at what's going on. We got in the slope deflection method, remember we got to go look at the various members and figure out which ones we know the member end displacements and, what, and where do we not. And so at A we know that our theta A is going to be zero because of the fixed end. Theta D then is also equal to zero, but B and C are free to rotate, meaning there's no external constraints that prevent them from rotating. And then we have the lateral load, that's going to cause probably some sway, in this case likely to the left, to go along with the direction of the lateral load. Right, so that's going to mean that if that happens, then the column will have experienced a cord rotation. Now, the beam, however, won't. Right, so let's, this is going to look a little strange to you. I'm going to draw a cord rotation acting to the right, even though there's no way it's really going to go that way. I'm going to do that because I've decided that I want to con retain our sign convention and the slope deflection approach of clockwise being positive. And that's the only reason why I'm showing it that way. That does mean by the time we're done with our work, we should anticipate that these chord rotation values will end up being then uh, equal to zero. I'm sorry, we'll be, we'll be negative. All right, so let's articulate this now down here in our steps. Our kinematic degrees of freedom are such that the ones that we know are going to be zero are theta A equals zero, theta D equals zero. The chord rotation for the beam is also going to be equal to zero. That's because our basic assumption here is going to be that we have no axial deformations. And as such then um, the tops of the columns won't sink down although the, they can move left and right and so therefore um, BC doesn't have any chord rotation and with, with that as the result that BC can't shorten what that also tells us is that psi AB is going to equal psi CD let's just call that psi it is an unknown. It's one of our kinematic degrees of freedom, as well as having that theta b is not known and theta c is not known. So three kinematic degrees of freedom. The problem we're going to need three equations to be able to eventually solve for those. All right. So then next we write the slope deflection equation for each and every member, and so the MNF equations, of course, are. Um, stiffness values, K values here, are the I over the L of the member. So that's 600 inches to the fourth over 10 feet for the left column. For the beam, we have an I over L of 800 over the 10 feet. And then we have, of course, the other column being the same as the first one, which is not BD, that is CD, and that will be then equal to 600 over 10. Right, so they all have the same length, and as that is the basis, let's define K to be 800. That means we're setting KBC equal to K, and that means that then our uh, KB will be equal to 3 quarters of K, as will KCD be three quarters of K. Right now, the only member that has directly applied loads to them are, is the beam, 
that's the distributed load. So the other two don't have fixed end moments. We'll get the sway uh, load or to the 10 kips applied at joint C into this later. All right, so the fixed end moment BC will be minus WL squared over 12, whereas CB will be positive WL squared over 12. So we get then minus 3 kips per foot times 10 feet squared over 12, and the other one is going to be the positive version of that. And that will turn out to be 3 times 100 divided by 12, or 25 plus or minus for those two fixed end moments. Right, and that will set us up then we can go and write the slope deflection equation for each and every member end, being careful to substitute in for values in the right way at the right